When Alex Jones was getting sued by the families of Sandy Hook, who he had defamed as crisis actors, his lawyers were incompetent enough to accidentally send the entire digital copy of his cell phone to the attorney representing said Sandy Hook families. Well, now those texts have been made public. The Southern Poverty Law Center has reported on them. And oh boy, it is a doozy. Now, I felt tempted to feel sorry for Alex Jones because he's such a miserable, sad person. But if you also get that temptation to feel bad for him, just remember that he made the lives of the parents who lost their children in that shooting miserable, okay? To the point where one family had to move eight times to get away from Alex Jones's audience members who were sending them death threats, following them around, stalking them. One person even got arrested for doing so. So just keep that in mind. With that said though. Okay, I wanna add one thing that comes out in these in this story. He said once on air that they should be LGBTP instead of Q because it stands for pedophiles. And then he went on to say that gay people chop up your children with an ax and rape them. Okay, so that's the kind of disgusting pig that Alex Jones is. I don't feel sorry about any of his misery. I love that he's miserable. And by the way, of course, it's always self hatred. It turns out there's an overwhelming chance that he's bi. At a minimum, okay. I'm going to show you some of those details in a second too. So uh, he says this quite often in the text. Alex Jones described himself as living in hell, being part of a sick joke, and sinking down into a black hole. Yes, that was repeated many times uh, throughout these text exchanges with multiple people. Now the texts also show that Alex Jones feels alienated or is alienated and has few or no friends. Only chats with other pro Trumpers and people he knows uh, through his work, if you can call it that, over at Infowars. Now even in texts with his dad, you could tell his dad wants nothing to do with him. His dad never responds to him. Here, we'll give you some examples. Alex Jones to David Jones, that's his father. It's no big deal, in another text message, I get notice via media, meaning notice about, you know, the the the, the trial that he's facing, the amount of money he has to pay, all of that. So I just need to start shutting down. I always get my legal news a few weeks late via news. And then another text, I just need to love it. I don't I don't know what that means. His dad probably didn't know what it meant either. That's why he never replied to him. Yeah, his dad never replied. So he was ignored. Despite that, he tries again, continues texting his father. I is very scary, probably it is what he meant. It is very scary to never, almost never to learn about stuff from yourselves. If that doesn't make any sense, you're gonna see later, there's a lot of vodka involved in his life. Yes. Uh, if very disconcerting, um, and then and nothing can stop it. Then he writes, uh, it seems, but it, yes, it's a misspelled, whatever. Uh, it's like gravity, a black hole, and then there's a hole emoji apparently. So uh, his father never responds to that either. The report also sheds light on uh, Jones's conversations with his uh, second and current wife, uh, Erica Wolf. There was a lot included in the Southern Poverty Law Center's reporting on this. I just felt gross to share all of it, and I'm not going to get into all of it. Uh, but let me just say, it's very clear that she wants out of that marriage. She has suggested divorce multiple times. Uh, he is concerned that she's cheating on him, accuses her of cheating on him, has actually deployed people to spy on her because he suspects that she's cheating on him. They have gotten into physical altercations, which is clear based on text exchanges that he has shared with his father. In one case, he says that they got into a fight, it got violent, and that her jaw is in pain and that she's looking for painkillers. His father happens to be a dentist who, I assume would have the ability to prescribe painkillers to her. But nonetheless, it seems like a very dangerous and toxic relationship. I am not reticent to go into it, so I will. So first of all, he watches cuckold porn. Which, whatever. Okay, to each his own, all right. 
and then he's obsessed with is his wife having sex with others? And so that he hires a former black water guy to track her throughout town. Not at all creepy, but get a load of this extra irony. He usually asks the guy to follow her while he's having an affair. So Alex Jones will go to someone else's house and he says, I want a sucky in the text. Oh, come on. And meanwhile, he's telling the Blackwater guy, hey, while I go have sex with the other woman, see if my wife is having sex with someone else. I don't know if it's because he's gonna be angry about it or he's gonna be turned on by it. Um, so we know publicly he accidentally showed the trans porn that he was watching uh, in, in a stream that he did and said that, oh yeah, that's on everybody's phone. Yeah. Uh, and then his wife, uh, they have a lot of sexual texts back and forth, it heavily implying that he's bisexual. At some point she sends just a p picture of a large black penis to him, no women in the picture. And then she says, you be bi, okay? Uh, now, look, maybe his wife is wrong and he's not bisexual. Maybe he looked at that picture and was like, I don't know why you sent this to me. It's possible, okay, I'm just giving you the facts. But it appears there is massive self-loathing in that black hole that he describes. Yeah, and look, I, I don't know. I don't know why I felt uncomfortable sharing that part of it. But consider the fact that he very likely might be bi and says some of the worst things publicly about the LGBT community. Yes, that's why yeah. it's self hatred. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so you you mentioned the porn stuff. I think that's relevant too because of course publicly he has this persona as someone who's just almost puritanical when it comes to his views on pornography. But behind the scenes he's like sending Pornhub links to his employees. Okay, yeah. so uh, it, like it's cr it's just crazy to me. Like I can't imagine anyone at work sending me porn links, but that's what he's been doing. So uh, Jones shares links to pornographic videos in texts uh, that Hate Watch reviewed. Uh, the videos he shares have titles that indicate they likely contain the same hardcore content he derides. Many of the videos, which include in their titles words like cuckolding and hot slaves, along with a variety of explicit sex acts, feature a woman having sex with multiple men. Now, that part is relevant because on his show, he condemned anyone who watches pornography, and he specifically talked about that kind of porn that he happened to be watching himself and sharing with other employees. I mean, it's so, it's such classic projection. On the air, he's like, they're degrading these poor women, 20 guys at once, it's a plot. And by the way, you'll never guess who he thinks the plot was hatched by, the plot of pornography, Jews. Okay, so he's blaming Jewish Americans for porn that he himself is watching, and that's why he's obsessed with. And then on air, he's like, oh yeah, I'll tell you what, the universalist, globalist, etc. they're doing the porn. Meanwhile, he goes back home, he's like, I love that porn, where is it? 20 guys at once, all the genitalia, okay? And looking up the cuckolding, etc. So it's, it's a catastrophe. Uh, <laughs> and normally, I would feel any other human being, I'd feel terrible about it. And you don't, look, their private you know, sex life is their own, etc. But you talking about gay people chopping up people's kids on air, you sick F, you know who you are. Okay, take your own stupid personal problems and go to a goddamn therapist instead of weaponizing your lunatic audience to go harm people. I mean, he needs to get substance abuse treatment because he's also dealing with a pretty severe issue with alcoholism. So uh, one of the employees uh, that has turned on him, has been speaking out against him is this guy named Zach Drucker. He uh, worked at Infowars on and off for about six years. And so Drucker disclosed uh, that Alex Jones would engage in substance abuse at work. He would be drinking at work. Uh, in fact, Drucker is the one who leaked footage of Alex drinking during the day while working at Infowars. When he was asked why he did it, he said that he did it to show his coworkers that they're dealing with an unstable person. Drucker also told Hate Watch that Jones would walk around the office carrying a white Dixie cup and nine out of 10 times there would be vodka in it. And you'll notice that vodka seems to be his liquor of choice. In some text exchanges, he had employees pick up vodka and deliver it to him to the office. 
Okay, and I want to give you one example of a text exchange that he had on February 6th of 2020. So Alex Jones to Patrick Riley, I am sick. Patrick Riley, Alex Jones to Patrick Riley, no slay. I guess they would work out together, so that's what he was referring to. Patrick Riley responds, sorry to hear hear that, hope you feel better. And then he responds, tell Derek to get me vodka. That is. You see that over and over and over again. Get me vodka, get me vodka right now. I need the vodka right now, okay? So, all right, look, he's got an alcohol problem. Again, go to a therapist, deal with it, instead of dealing with it on air and encouraging your audience to do insane things. I wanna quickly go back to what he, how he treats his wife and how he is having people essentially spy on his wife. So Hate Watch found two instances where Jones contacts his security employee, former Austin Police Department officer and Blackwater mercenary Tim Enlow to apparently monitor his wife. I wanted to be specific about how he had people spy on his wife. The other thing I wanted to share was just one text exchange between Alex Jones and his wife. So Jones to Erica Wolf, he says, you hate us. She never responds to him, okay? Then he says, I see it in your eyes. You won't even talk to me, pick up now. You won't even break away for one minute to talk to me. There have been examples of text exchanges that you can read in this reporting where he's just texting her endlessly over and over again. She's not responding and then she puts like an away message, an automatic away message. So as he's texting her, the only response he gets is like this automatic, I'm away from my phone right now, I'll get back to you once I return, like that kind of thing. And he's furious about it. Well, you know what's really romantic? Hiring a black water mercenary to track your mm. wife across all across town. While you're cheating on her. And yeah, <laughs> and I mean, with the, by the way, his um, um, mistress, also a right wing lunatic sending him, you know, all these messages from white supremacist websites about the Jews and everybody else, of course. And uh, but they, but with her, she's a, he's a little bit more romantic. He's he wants her to run a bath for him, and he's got all these things. And, when, and then while he's yelling at his wife, he's with the mistress, like, where are you? What's going on with you and someone else? Okay, come on, it's time for my bath. Right, so look, I think that the way Infowars is going to end is they're going to have like one, like some sort of convention or something, mm-hmm. and all the crazy guys in the audience are going to have sex with each other, and they're going to be satiated, and then we're all going to be done with this. National as long as we now. don't have to hear the details about that, that would be great. Um, now, one final thing I'll say, okay. The message that I feel like most Americans hear from like the moment they're born to the moment they die is that the only thing that will make them happy is material stuff, right? Alex Jones, I mean, literally selling weirdo supplements brought in hundreds of millions of dollars, just was fabulously wealthy. Obviously, these lawsuits and the damages he has to pay kind of destroyed that. But nonetheless, when all you care about is obtaining money and you don't care about who you're gonna hurt in your quest for that power and money, you know who you end up like? I'll show you, you end up like this guy, this poor, poor guy. Oh yeah, precious. precious. He fell into a black hole too and never got out. Mm, think um, about it. So that that's Alex Jones in a couple of years. Yep. Um, so look. Yeah, I, I take some joy in Alex Jones being deeply miserable in his private life. This is not a normal debate. Oh, I don't like his views on regulation or free trade. No, the guy's a monster and encourages his audience to do terrible things against people who are defenseless. So our job is to fight back against bullies. And knowing that those bullies might be rich and might have all these things, but at the end of the day, they're deeply miserable, makes me happy and should make you happy. The next time you get angry about Alex Jones, think, well, at least I'll never be as miserable as he is. Here at TYT, we work to cut through all the establishment media's biases and bring you the news from a factual and progressive viewpoint. Now, allow me to introduce you to Ground News, a new tool that you can use to stay informed on what's really going on around the world. Ground News doesn't just bring you the information, it also provides you with an easy to use rating system that measures each article's political leanings, factuality, and gives you complete transparency on who owns the news that you're reading. Like today, I was on their site, 
and I saw an article about some improvements in the ozone layer. And I was a little skeptical because good news about the climate is pretty rare these days. But with over 100 sources originating from an even spread of news organizations, I was confident that what I was reading was true. So score one for Earth. So get the whole picture and break through the corporate media agenda by subscribing to Ground News Today.